we are going to solve quadratic equations using the square root property. And the square root property is really important, and it goes back to what we talked about in the last chapter. Because what the square root property says, it says if I have x squared equals p, then my x is going to be the square root of p, but it's not just going to be the positive one, it's also going to be the negative one. So let's demonstrate this with a simple example. Let's say x squared equals 4. Well, then x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So we get two answers, positive 2 and negative 2. And when we check these, 2 squared is, of course, 4, but so is negative 2. So since both of these are roots of 4, they are both answers to the problem x squared equals 4. So the entire key to the square root property is to get whatever is squared on one side, p squared, and the number on the other. So we have to start in this case by adding 9 to both sides. So p squared equals 9. Then we take the square root of both sides, and what we do, we get p by itself, and that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. And so we get two answers, positive 3 and negative 3. And most computer programs are going to make you write them in separately. Positive 3 and negative 3. There is no plus minus button. We could also look at 3x squared minus 60 equals 0. So we start by getting what is being squared by itself. So 3x squared equals 60. Divide by 3. Get x squared equals 20. Take the square root of both sides. Remember that since we're taking the square root of both sides, we need the plus or minus. And then we simplify. Square root of 20 is 4 and 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 stays inside. So we get two answers, plus the square root of 2 square root of 5 and minus 2 square root of 5. And the order doesn't matter. If I put the negative first, I'd still get this correct. Now, what if we have y squared plus 14 equals 2? Same thing. We subtract to get the y squared by itself. y squared equals minus 12. We take the square root of both sides. We get y equals plus or minus the square root of minus 12. Which 12 is 4 and 3. The minus means we're going to get an i. So our final answer is y equals plus or minus 2i square root of 3. Now let's check this one. I just want to make sure that we've got this. So we're going to take positive 2i squared root of 3, and we're going to square it. Add 14 to it, and make sure that's a 2. So that square applies separately to each piece. So 2 squared times i squared times the square root of 3 squared is 4 times negative 1 times 3. Plus 14, does that equal 2? Plus 14, does that equal 2? 4 times 3 is 12. Times the negative is negative 12 plus 14 equals 2. And sure enough, 2 does equal 2, so we know we have our answer. And the negative we don't need to worry about, because if the negative were here, we just squared away. Now, the last piece of this problem that we want to look at is, what if we have a quantity squared? What if we have x minus 2 squared equals 25? So notice the square is still by itself, and we've got something inside of it. But when we square root both sides, squaring a, square rooting a square just gives us what's inside, and square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Now we add 2 to both sides, so we get x equals 2 plus or minus 5. And since these can combine, we're going to. We're going to get 2 plus 5, or 2 minus 5, which is 7, or minus 3. So our answers are x equals 7, or x equals minus 3. And both of these give us 25 as a result. And that's using the square root property.